You know, life can be really, really hard sometimes. I've experienced a death in my family recently and it's just really been affecting me. I have not been wanting to do anything. I haven't really been sewing and I did attempt to go out and buy some fabric the other day and I may do that again today. Now I'm about to prepare to go to a funeral, which of course I'm not happy about. I've been trying to like read books because I do like to read and I just find myself rereading the same sentence over and over because thoughts will come into my mind and memories will come into my mind and uh, it's just hard. It's about four o'clock in the morning right now I haven't been able to sleep, but I know that things will get better. And I just felt like sharing. I know things are not always going to be the best in life. There are always ups and downs. So I'm going to try my best to focus on the positive, think about all the good memories, and just continue to live life and cherish the moments we do still have here. So we just landed in Detroit and I think now we're trying to figure out what we want to eat. It is a new day and I'm actually feeling much better. I cannot wait to show you all who I saw on the airplane. It's a celebrity and that's all I'm going to say right now. But when I get where I'm going, I'll give you more details and share with you who I saw. I can't wait for you to see. Okay, so I just ordered a burrito, but I can't hold it anymore. Judge Mathis was on my airplane. I pointed him out to my husband and we asked if we could take a picture with him. And he was like, yeah, yeah. He was sitting in first class and we were sitting in row 23. So he said, what seat are you in? I'll come back there. And you know, he wanted to wait till everybody was seated and everything got settled. So I was thinking, mm, he's probably not gonna come back here. But he actually did. So I thought that that was so nice. And that was like the highlight of my trip. So I made it to my relative's house and I was going through what I'm going to wear for the funeral. And I purchased this gap dress years ago. I don't really get to wear it very much, but I really, really love it. I love how it kind of gathers around the waist and there are buttons down the front. And what I also like is that there are these little pleats that go all around the front and the back of the dress. But I really like this dress, so I didn't pick anything that I made. I just grabbed this dress so that, you know, I can wear this for the occasion. And also, before I left, I did end up making it to Joanne Fabrics. I decided for my next sewing make that I want to make a simplicity dress. It's one of the Jiffy patterns. So that's going to be what I work on when I get back home. And I did purchase some fabric and some notions to go with the dress, but that was it. I did not do anything else. I just didn't have it in me. But once I get back home and everything is taken care of here, then I will work on the next make and share it with you. I just woke up not too long ago and took a shower. Now I'm getting dressed. I'm wearing this bodysuit that I made recently and this is my first time actually wearing it out. I'm going to lunch with a friend from high school who I haven't seen in about maybe two years or so. So it's going to be nice to catch up with her. So it's going to be about 80 degrees today and I hope I don't burn up in this black top. But you know how sometimes you go to restaurants and it's cold on the inside. So I always like to be prepared for that. And the fact that I can just, you know, roll up or push up the sleeves is helpful. So I'm not too, too concerned. I'd rather be hot than cold any day. <sighs> I was thinking last night that I kind of want a wig. I like my hair, I really do, but sometimes you just want to change. I'm almost done. I'm just going to put my makeup on and head on out the door. 
So I had a good time hanging out with my girlfriend and it's a new day and now I'm actually on my way to the grocery store because we have been going through some food at the house with all the family. So I just kind of want to replenish things, you know, get some basics like bacon, eggs, bread, butter, things like that. Just so, you know, we'll have plenty to eat and it's not on one person's pocket. So that's what I'm doing right now and I am actually enjoying time with family. So that's really important at a time like this. So I made a detour and I decided to stop at Half Price Books just to see what kind of sewing books they had. And oh my goodness, look what I'm looking at. They have patterns. I had no idea that Half Price Books sold patterns. So I'm gonna go through some of these and see if there's any that I wanna pick up. And then I will look through some of the books also. Some of these are even vintage. So this should be interesting. What a nice surprise, I had no idea. So I didn't find any patterns that I'm gonna take home, but I'll show you some of the ones that I looked at a little closer, but I decided not to get. So this is Simplicity 7948. I think it's a jumpsuit and a skirt. So I looked at that one. This is McCall's 4812. And this, I think, also is a jumpsuit. I think that that's cute. Butterick 4841. I think this is a skirt and a top and a jacket. This is Butterick 5051. And I think this is also a jumpsuit. This is cute, too. They also have this Vogue pattern. This is Vogue 1725. And... It looks like a dress with a nice little split in the front. That's really cute. And these patterns are $2.99. That's a good deal. This other one is Vogue 1716. And this looks like a jacket, a belt, and some pants. So I found this book that shows you how to correct problems when you're trying to fit your clothes. You can look up what issue you're having and then it will tell you how to fix it. So this is like for full thighs, thin thighs, what else do they have? Full abdomen, flat buttocks, and the instructions seem pretty easy to follow. This book is called Sewing Classic Clothes That Fit by Renee however you pronounce that, B-E-R-G-H. So I don't think I'm gonna get it, but I did wanna share it in case you're interested. So they had a magazine section in there and I was thumbing through the magazine section. They had so many different magazines like crafts and food and travel, you name it. And I went straight to the crafts and I did find two thread magazines and I got both of them. And they are older. This one is from, when is this? November of 2014. So I'm going to read this one. And then the other one is from November of 2011. So the content should still be relevant. should still be good since it's about sewing. So I don't mind that they're older. And I can't wait to read these goodies. So now I'm on my way to the grocery store for real. So I told the people at the house, our family, that I was just gonna go out and make a run. So at least nobody's waiting on me to come back with food because I spent some time in this store. But now for real, I'm gonna go to the grocery store, bring some food back to the house, read my magazine, and just relax a little bit. So I found a Target and they should have some groceries in here. I just needed to put something on my lips because they felt so dry. This is a lip gloss by Smashbox. It's a natural neutral looking color. I really like it. It's called um, Beachy Keen. So I think it's really cute. So anyway, I'm gonna go in here and get these groceries.
So today is Sunday. It's actually been a few days since you last saw me when I was out shopping at Target. And I actually look forward to Sundays because that's the day that my videos are usually released. And I just love reading comments. It just makes me so happy that you all are there watching. It just brings me so much joy. So I do want to say thank you for that. And when I get home in a couple days, I plan to start working on the next sewing project. I must say it's been really nice having a break, not being in the sewing room. And like I mentioned before, spending time with family, it's just been so refreshing and something that I feel like I truly, truly needed. I feel like I've had a reset kind of. So I'm still out of town. I decided I would just go ahead and start getting my clothes ready to get ready to go back to California. But I had the craziest dream last night. So before I went to sleep, my husband was showing me pictures of these really cute little baby puppies they're about this size with curly hair just adorable and I fell asleep after he showed me the pictures and I had a dream about one of those little bitty dogs so in my dream we had actually bought the dog and we had the dog at home and the dog bit me I ended up calling the doctor and I guess I showed the doctor the bite over the phone and the doctor told me that I needed stitches but that he could do the stitches over the phone. And that's when you know it's a dream when there's like a crazy part to it. I don't know if it's just me, but like dreams seem a little bit believable until there's that little twist that just does not make sense. So it's kind of like if you were hanging out with your girlfriends and you and your girlfriends were having a really good time and you call her and you're like, girl, I had a dream that we were out last night partying. We were having a good time. But the only thing was your head was all backwards. That's when you know it's a dream. Is it just me or are your dreams kind of weird and crazy like that too? I did not cut out my pattern before I left, but I did wash my fabric, which is this green denim that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics. I want to work on this dress here, which is Simplicity 9739, and I want to make this long view here. I think that's really cute. It does have a belt that ties around the middle of the dress, and I decided to pick up this belting from Joanne Fabrics and I'm gonna use this for the belt. I don't know if I have enough. It does come in a bundle where you can just ask for the specific amount that you need. So if I don't have enough in this here, which I need to use for piece six as the belt piece, then I'll just have to go back to Joanne's and get a little bit more, but I'm hoping that this will be long enough for what I need. It turns out that the package of belting is not gonna be long enough because I do need two pieces and it's coming up a little short. I could actually use it and just have my belt be a little bit shorter, but I do think I want the length that it's supposed to be, so I will have to go and get some more of this belting. There are five pieces that you cut out for view B, and I only cut out these four pieces because of the strapping that I'm gonna use in place of piece number six but I did want to show you these darts because I thought that they were so different they're pretty big and pretty long so this is one of the darts and there are two of them that look like this so they're about yay wide and then they go all the way down to here this one here is a little narrower and then you have a smaller regular looking dart right here and this is in piece number one, which is the main body of the dress. So I have my pieces laid out. This number one piece is really wide. And then I have these little pieces here that are cut two. And then this piece number four is cut one. So I'll cut this out after I finish cutting everything else out. One of the darts has these two little dots right here. And when you get to the left dart, which is actually this dart here. You're supposed to leave it open between these two circles and that is going to be for the belt to go through. I was just stitching away and I didn't leave an opening so I had to go back and mark where the opening should be and then I'm going to unpick the stitches here. This same dart is over here on the right side and the right side is not left open so this side will be okay. I just need to fix this side. 
Now I'm going to work on the tie in. This is gonna go around your neck area when you're wearing it. It has a couple of dots down here, so I'm folding it together with right sides together. And then I'm gonna stitch this all around and then I will turn it out. So I will have to use a tool to turn everything over to the right side and then this will get attached to the top of the dress. So I use this tool, I'll link it below if you're interested and I got it to this point. I just put the strap onto this thing and now I'm able to pull it through. And then after I get it turned, I'll just press it. And then I can attach it to the front of the dress. I do have one more to do. So here's one and then I'll work on the other one doing it the same exact way. This is the top of the dress and this is where the straps are going to go. So you have a small dot and a large dot and I always put a circle around the large dot. It just makes it easier for me to figure out which is which. And then I did the same thing on the straps. So where is it? There's the little dot and then I guess the other dot got lost. Let's see, here it is on this side, I can see it. So there's the large dot and the small dot over here. And then you're just going to line the dots up and then I'm going to base this in place. So I'll do it on this side and also over here on this side with the other strap. And this is the part that's going to go around the neck area. I'm working on the facing and I just wanted to show you something. So this is piece number five and I sewed it to piece number four. And I sewed it at five eighths of an inch and then when you turn it out, you get this. So this is not even and this is not what you want. So what you should do is stitch this together with the seam allowances put together. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. I did this in a basting stitch because I wanted to be able to easily remove it and I wanted to show you how it will work if you do it just at 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to get this taken apart and then I'll show you how I'm going to do it after that. I restitched everything and now everything is lining up the way that it should line up. So what I did was I matched the seam allowances together. So this has a seam allowance here, which is 5 eighths of an inch. The bottom piece also has a seam allowance, which is 5 eighths of an inch. And so I matched up the two seam allowances together. And so you have this hanging off a little bit here. So you can see these edges aren't matching. You just match the seam allowances, which is going to cause this to hang over a little bit and that's okay. And then it doesn't match on this side either and you just don't worry about it because the only thing you're concerned with is making sure that the seam allowances line up together. And that way everything will turn out to be even when you get ready to apply it to your dress. You attach this piece number five to both sides of the facing. So I'll show you how I did it over here on this side. So I marked the five eighths of an inch line with some chalk and I marked the five eighths of an inch line here also on piece number five. So what you would do with right sides together, you would just make sure your lines are lined up. So I'm going to kind of place this right on top. Make sure they're pretty even on both sides. Okay, so the chalk lines should be matching up. Your notches should match up also when you do it this way. And then I will go ahead and stitch it. And then when I flip it up, it should be nice and even. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this side down too. What I will do next is take this facing and attach it to the top of the dress. And then you have this area here on the back and there is a fold that goes all the way down. So I put a little mark here, a little slit, and I'm going to fold this over and then this facing will get attached to the folded portion 
and it is going to be stitched all across and that same thing will be done over here on this side so I will fold this in and attach the facing to it and then this side here is also finished according to the directions so before I actually even fold this in I'm going to clean up this edge here so I will probably just fold it over and press it and then stitch it down and then fold it over and then attach the facing and stitch that down here is that back edge folded in and then I also searched this edge and I folded it up toward this fold and then I pressed that down and stitched it and then here is the front facing and I am attaching it to the top and I'm going to stitch right over this folded edge of this back facing area here there are some marks on the back facing, some circles, which indicate where the belt goes. And for me, it's going to be this strapping piece. So you will attach it to the top of the dress. And the directions say to hand stitch it. I may hand stitch it or I may just try to see if I can just stitch it with the machine. I have these two dots here which are the length of the belt. I'm going to create a thread loop for the belt to go through once the dress is on. a love share for you so I recently found out about these ultra shine gel nail strips and they're actually like stickers and that is what I have on my nails right now I left this one undone so that I can show you how it works I found this at ultra or Ulta I should say but I found out that on Amazon they have many more colors and options to choose from it comes with this nail file the way it works is you find the sticker that will fit your nail so let's just go with this one and then you peel it off I think this is so cool you center the sticker on the center of your nail and then you just press it down and shape it and then you take the file. One side is smooth and one side is rough. I'm going to use the rough side and you just kind of rub it onto the nail. You're kind of creating a perforation so that you can pull the rough edge off that's hanging at the top. So you just kind of file it onto your nail and then you should be able to pull it off at some point. Now I'm not doing this in a neat way. I'm trying to, there we go. I'm trying to do it quickly just so you can get the idea. But once you pull it off, then it sticks on your nail. And I love it. And it says that it will last up to 14 days. So I wanted to share this and I will put a link below if you're interested in trying them from Amazon.